Uh, it's Sunday morning, December the 29th. It is 4.50 in the, there it goes, 4.50 in the morning. You can see right there. And uh, early, but uh, we usually get up at 4.30 here. And it's about 28 degrees outside, just over 40 degrees inside, heading towards 50 or so. Got the wood stove started up. I like to have uh, cool temperatures when we sleep. But I want to announce a new off-grid channel. I talked about this uh, in other sermons in the past, and um, it's going to talk a little bit about it, what's the point of it and everything else. It is called Northern Maine Off-Grid. I'll put the links to it down in the description box. And uh, I'd like to ask you if you could go over and subscribe to it. Um, if you believe in what I do here at King James Video Ministries, then um, this off-grid channel is going to help to support this. I'm going to give you a couple points to consider here why I'm doing this, okay, and, and some other things to think about. Uh, first and foremost, I am not leaving the ministry, okay? This does not mean I'm going to do, I'm doing a secular channel, I'm going to do stuff about off-grid and homesteading and whatever else, things that I've learned over the years. Um, and that doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing videos at King James Video Ministries. I'm always going to be doing videos, uh, sermons and things like that. I have a lot more to preach about, a lot more work to do for the Lord. Uh, but I'm going to get into the reasons why I'm doing this secular channel um, in the next couple points here. Uh, but a big part of this has been literally years of prayer. Okay, I've been praying about this thing for a long time. Um, you know, the, the thing of doing secular work on the side. And I, and I always have done secular work, by the way, too. It's not just the ministry only. Um, I've done other jobs throughout the years. Because uh, King James Video Ministries actually started in 2007. So uh, there were times I, I did tree work for people. I've bought and sold vehicles, fix them up, sell them. I've done that for a long time. So I've, I've always had some secondary income, but um, this idea hopefully will provide more income. And, and again, I'm, I'm trying this. I've been praying about it for a while. And if the Lord doesn't want it, well, okay, I'll do something else. Um, the first reason here under the thing of I'm not leaving the ministry. I wrote out some notes here. Um, young men need fatherly guidance in being self-reliant from a Christian man. Uh, there's a lot of guys on YouTube that are, that'll teach you how to build things with your hands. Uh, they'll teach you how to make things out of wood or how to, you know, do all kinds of different things, fix your vehicle, whatever else, but they're not saved. They're quite lost and it can be quite vexing and, and it can lead you the wrong way as a young man. And I know that I've had quite a few young men actually write to the ministry here, both online and offline, talk to a lot of young men and they say, either I didn't have a father or my, my dad just never taught me anything. I wasn't raised to learn how to work. So it'd be nice to know, you know, how to do that kind of thing and whatever else and not have to worry about, is the guy gonna cuss or whatever in the video? Or is the guy going to tell a dirty joke or, or you know, is he going to talk about evolution? That humans have been doing this for millions of years or something stupid. You know, uh, you're not going to get that from my channel. Um, another point, a secular channel will open up lots of new chances to witness to the lost. Okay, people are going to come along to the secular channel and they're going to say, hey, this guy puts out some interesting stuff. Um, again, it's going to be more focused on, you know, uh, education, yes, but also entertainment. Um, it's going to be secular work. Um, and so people will watch that and they'll say, I wonder what else he does. Well, other channels there listed and I'm going to list my ministry channel. That'll funnel people in that are interested in off-grid homesteading and it'll say, okay, go on over here and look at the Bible-related type of stuff. You know, the Bible preaching and teaching of the Word. So um, it's kind of like when Jesus goes up to the woman at the well, you know, he's talking to her about the water and he, you know, I need some water and things and, and then he transitions it into the spiritual. Well, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, Paul, you know, with Aquila and Priscilla, they were making tents and things together. Again, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I do have plans uh, not only just to do vi these videos for, you know, education and entertainment, the off-grid stuff, but I'm also going to you know, possibly in the future start to get back into wood turning again and use the secular channel to promote that 
and maybe even you know open up a store on Etsy or something. Uh, we, we already have an Etsy account, but I'm not selling anything there yet. Um, another point, um, <clears throat> which I've kind of talked about, it will provide more income for us so I can move plans for the ministry forward. Right now, um, you know, the, the whole new ministry office thing, I put up the GoFundMe thing, and there's people that donate to it, and I appreciate that, and it helps us. It, it did help us to get, you know, some supplies and things to be able to create a place where I can, where I can have my books. I can make video here off-grid with solar power, so I'm thankful for that, but it still is not the end goal that we need. And <clears throat> I have a lot of plans that are very ambitious for the future. I would like to actually possibly hire people in the future to help with the ministry. Um, that's another thing I haven't talked a whole lot about. I've said a few things to some brethren, but um, I would like to possibly hire people in the future. I'd like to get into gospel tracks, uh, gospel tracks that don't have graven images in them, gospel tracks that don't have uh, find a good local church in your area, or you know that, that teach true salvation, not easy believism, and all the other kind of nonsense. Um, but it's just it's too much to do by myself and my wife. So you know we're going to need more money to make that happen in the future. Um, a lot of other plans as well. Uh, and so I'd like to be able to actually purchase a uh, ministry office in the future, and um, a lot of other plans there. Well, I have to have a secular income to make some of that stuff happen. I can't just expect the body of Christ to provide all of that, and I get it. I understand that. I'm thankful to the body of Christ for keeping us going where you know we can produce more video, but you know, I, I always knew that this ministry was going to outgrow me. You know, I thought if the Lord's for this and if this keeps going forward, it's going to get past the point where I can handle it anymore. And, it, and it's been that way for a while, actually. I haven't been able to answer emails. Um, I had to shut down my email account um, simply because it just, I mean, I was getting a couple hundred emails a day uh, and, and some really good questions. And some, I mean, it, there were times I'd be spending eight or 10 hours just answering emails and I couldn't get to the video stuff. And, and I had to say, I have to shut down the email and I can't write back and forth with people. There's some people that have my email address, but not that many. Um, again, I'd like to be able to move King James Video Ministries into a whole new direction. Well, I'm going to need secular income to do that. Um, so, you know, your subscription does mean something over there. Even if you're not into off-grid stuff, I would appreciate if people would go over there and, and subscribe as a way to help support the ministry. Um, it will be a monetized channel, in other words, over there at Northern Maine Off-Grid. And I've talked about you shouldn't monetize Christian videos okay there's not gonna be a lot of Bible study type of stuff over there I will talk little bits here and there about the Lord I'll probably quote some verses of Scripture while doing work secular work you know um, but I'm not gonna get into sitting down and okay open up your Bible and whatever that's what this channel is for okay um, another big point number two here I've written um, the Lord led us to off-grid living for a reason, okay? And I do mean that. Um, when we, uh, without getting into a huge, big, detailed thing, when we came to Maine, um, we, you know, were, wanted to buy some land, and we found some land in Littleton, Maine, and we, we bought it. Uh, it was 66 acres of land um, for $18,000. Very, very good deal. It was just, you know, two less than $300 an acre. And, um, and again, you know, if you don't understand, if you're living in the city and you're thinking, man, 66 acres of land, um, there's people up here. I, I met a guy, I bought a truck from a guy up here at 700 acres, literally 700 acres. Um, there's houses for sale with 400 acres. You know, there's a lot of land up here and it's cheap. So it's not a, a huge deal, you know, to say, well, I bought 66 acres. And you say, what do you need with all that? Well, it's called an investment. Okay. Um, again, people don't understand that. Uh, you buy a lot of land up here and you let the trees grow. In a couple of years, 10, 15 years, you can log, you know, depending on the, how badly it was logged in the past. Uh, if it's sustainably logged and things, you can log probably every five years. But um, if it's really hit hard, you know, logged hard, you're going to be waiting 10, 15 years, probably, maybe 20 years. 
before the logs are, are marketable again. But you can, you know, recoup your money and, and you can you can make good money on it. Um, <clears throat> so, again, a lot of people aren't going to understand the thing of why buy so much land or whatever else. But if you're in the area up here, uh, there's properties everywhere. There are hundreds of acres. Um, <clears throat> and I'd like to be able to, another reason I bought that much land um, was, you know, to be able to have firewood and be able to have, uh, you know, grow our own food and whatever else, um, and logs that I could use to build with in the future. Um, whole other thing there. Um, but we, we bought this property in Littleton, and over the next four years, from 2013 when we bought it to 2017, uh, I built um, two different buildings and started on a third big cabin, pretty good sized cabin, had the foundation done, the floors all insulated and everything else. And um, we put a, uh, I found a, a used travel trailer, put that back there on the property and we could camp in that. I put a wood stove in it and um, and we just, I would have gotten a lot more done, but we were dealing with a, a drunken Catholic neighbor, which I've talked about in other videos. And he just was constantly blocking our right of way back to there, which was totally illegal. Uh, he was supposed to actually maintain the right of way, and he refused to do that. Uh, there was a bridge area that would constantly wash out. The beavers would clog up the culverts. It would wash out the bridge, and he was supposed to maintain it. He never did. I had to do it, and then a uh, whole big story there. But then he actually put a trailer right on our right of way, um, which was illegal. You can't do that. And I got to preach the gospel to him finally because I was I always had to wait because I wouldn't preach to him when he was drunk and he was drunk most of the time that I talked to him and um, got to preach the gospel. He rejected the gospel and within a few months he was dead. Actually fell face forward into his own vomit after he puked in the shower and he fell face for, forward into it, basically drowned in his own vomit. So. But uh, he went to hell. Uh, unfortunately, we wanted to see the guy get saved, but, you know, whatever. Um, and then I had a bad situation because the guy that did the illegal act is now dead, and then the property went up for sale because he owed money because he had mortgaged the thing. And, and so it was, it was a weird situation. We ended up having to sell our property, and it sold in eight days, um, which obviously it was the will of the Lord that we got out of there. And we tried everything that we could to get another property. We wanted to have a property that would have been on grid, uh, that we could have, you know, ministry and enough land that we could go out and, and you know, replace the land that we had. And um, we tried to get a mortgage the one time. It didn't work, <laughs> um, you know, which was ridiculous because they told us at the bank, oh, yeah, it'll be no problem, you know, you you'll be fine getting a mortgage for this property. It wasn't that e even that expensive, but uh, it didn't work. They just, at the last minute they called and I mean, I literally had put an offer on the house. The people, the seller had accepted it. You know, it was just, okay, go to, you know, call the bank up, tell them the details, get the mortgage through and we'll start the payments and all the other stuff. And they called and she said, I'm really sorry you didn't get the mortgage. Uh, great, you know, and the thing just kind of fell through and and uh, we tried different times looking at houses that were on grid and whatever else, and it was just door slamming and door slamming and door slamming shut. And finally, it was late August of 2017 that we saw this property uh, where we're at right now. And, you know, it was a, the area where we wanted to be, a really beautiful area here. And it was actually a lot more land that we were thinking about getting, but we I just thought, I'm just going to put a ridiculous low offer on this thing. They're not going to accept it, but you know, I offered them twenty thousand dollars less than what they were asking than the asking price, and I thought I'm not even going to. If they come back and say, "Oh, well, we'll go to ten thousand, no. If they don't accept the offer, then I'll just say it's not God's will and move on. And they accepted the offer, and not even any kind of counter offer, and. They actually allowed us to start building before the paperwork was even done. So, uh, definitely God's will that, that we came here. Since we've been here, we've seen a lot of things, spiritual type of things happening in the area. Um, you know, uh, so I'm not going to get into a lot of that stuff. But um, 
no question at all um, in my mind that, oh, are you sure you made the right decision, you know, coming to this property? Yeah, I, I know. It's God's will. I know we're in God's will. Um, so why off-grid, you know? Um, well, I'd like to point out the fact that we still have a place on grid so we can do the videos. So I know the hypocritical you know, people say I'm a hypocrite because we're off grid, but we're on grid for the ministry thing or whatever else. You know, how can you do on grid videos while being off grid? Well, a lot of people do that. There's a lot of the off grid channels on YouTube that they'll drive to town and upload their videos and they edit the videos that they have with their laptop or whatever else at their off grid home. A lot of people do that. So it's not anything really shocking or whatever what we're doing. Um, but it's, what's the spiritual reason? Why would the Lord want us here? And that's, again, something we've prayed about, we've talked about you know, countless hours of, of conversation between my wife and I and even our son, you know, he gets involved too. But uh, with talking about why we're here and whatever. Um, and I believe, number one, it's because we can actually pave the way for Time of Jacob's Trouble saints. Because people that go into the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to have to be living a more sustainable life that keeps them away from the grid. Obviously, um, if you're going to endure to the end to be saved, uh, you're not going to be able to be on grid and having all the, you know, relying on grocery stores and relying on all kinds of other things. Um, so there's a possible tie in there. Another reason is I want to be able to help saved brethren to simplify their lives their lives and get out of debt i know a lot of people are drowning in debt uh, the best way to get out of debt is to do things that are more off grid you can save your money on your electric bill you can um, save money on food save money on a lot of things uh, that's another very big thing a lot of people are just drowning in debt and they don't know how to get out of it again they haven't been taught see um you know, and, and just to give you a little bit of history of my off-grid experience, um, I've stayed at and, and lived at off-grid places in Montana, Alaska, um, northern Pennsylvania. I grew up going to cabins and things that, that did not have electricity, uh, used to outhouses and wood stoves. And I mean, I grew up, the house I grew up in, we had a wood stove, and I didn't even know what any other heat was growing up. You know, I'd go to a friend's house and they have forced air, or oil heat, or whatever else, and it was just this is terrible. <laughs> you know, a weird heat here. Um, even Central America, uh, I've been, I've had, you know, stayed in non-electric places in Honduras and Costa Rica. So, uh, and of course, my wife, she has experience, you know, with her military background and things. Um, so we're both, we have some unique perspectives um, on a lot of the off-grid stuff. So I have. Quite a bit of experience. I'm not the world's leading expert or anything by any means, but um, we have a lot of experience with off-grid living. I have a lot of experience with um, forest management, logging. Uh, I used to sell firewood um, and, of course, wood turning, green, green woodworking, meaning you're woodworking or working with it when it's wet. Um, but uh, so, and we've we've done a lot of experimenting. We've we've um, done some unique things that will be showed in on the secular channel. And uh, the final reason, a lot of people say, well, you're not, you know, Brian is not, uh, he doesn't have a, very much transparency. In other words, I say that I'm off grid or whatever, but I, we keep a lot of this stuff quiet and keep a lot of it private. And, you know, we have reasons for that, but we've prayed about this again and, you know, do we just keep our life completely silent and, and whatever else and, and the Lord's helping us to, to get, you know, to live a really good life and we just not tell other people how to do the same thing? And um, and it's just gotten to the point where we, we're just praying about this and saying, you know what, there's so much the Lord has showed us, I think it's time to share that and, and everything with other people. So, um, I mean, even this tiny house right here, uh, that, that um, we purchased it. I built everything in here myself, installed the wood stove myself. Um, going to be showing that type of thing in the future. And if, if you, I know a lot of people expressed in, in another video where I mentioned this stuff, that you would like to do, you know, 
move out into the country, have a tiny house and whatever else. Um, how to do that, how to legally do it, um, how to build one, whatever. A lot of things I can teach people. So, and you know, and, and really, I mean, another point to, to think about is, I mean, how many videos do I really have to do before people can say, okay, I have enough to really learn the Bible here, you know? I mean, I, I love preaching. I absolutely love to preach the Word of God. I love it when the Lord shows me things and I can show it to the brethren. And a lot of you, you say, well, I was thinking the same thing, and it's interesting that you're confirming that. Um, I love that. I love the fellowship of the Spirit. Uh, but really, I mean, I, I don't want to get to a point where people worship me because I just do all the preaching for them. You know, you don't have any relationship with the Holy Spirit uh, or very, very little. It's just, you know, Brother Brian doing all the preaching for me or studying the Bible for me. Well, you know, hey, could you do a study on this? Hey, could you do a study on that? Well, that's okay, but it can get to a point of emulation, and I don't want that where people start to worship me instead of the Lord. And, oh, I just love your sermons. You're, I've never heard a preacher like you. And There's honor there, and I appreciate that honor that people give me, but I don't want to get to a point where I'm being worshipped. And I want you to, I mean, the whole point of this ministry is to get you to study the King James Bible yourself. You know, get away from the church buildings. They're not in Scripture. These little one-man pastor show or two-man pastors that, you know, the head pastor, senior pastor, and the assistant pastor or whatever else, and, and they tell you how to live and they tell you what to do with your life and whatever else. Yeah, you know... Um, elders is they're fine it's fine to have elders and things it's fine to meet with Christians absolutely but the whole church building structure thing and where you live a certain way when you go to church and you live a different way when you're not in church and you, you know you just got to rely on this preacher to always tell you things and you can't read the Bible for yourself ugh, ugh, ugh. that's dangerous so again I've, I've been concerned about that over the years that I, I don't want to get to a point where I'm crippling people in the sense of that, you know, I do all the studies for them and they don't ever read the Bible for themselves and study it for themselves. Um, so those are the main reasons why I'm going to be doing the secular channel. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing some more studies on this channel. But the, the studies will be slowing down on this channel if, you know, again, if this is the Lord's will. I am totally open to the Lord just saying, no, you know, show me. Uh, no, the, don't do the secular channel. Um, I don't know. We will see. Um, again, I, a lot of th times I'll, I'll come out in videos and I'll say, we're going to do this or we're going to do that. And people say, oh, wait, he didn't do that. Well, yeah, because the Lord stops me from doing it. The Lord says, okay, no, go in a different direction. You know, um, that's what happens when the Lord directs your life. A lot of times you will, you'll think, okay, I think the Lord wants me to do this. And the Lord at that, at that point in time is directing you in that way, but it's to show you something down the road that you can't see right now. All right, so for now, we're going to be trying this, this out, see how it goes. Um, so I think that about covers everything. Um, but like I said, it, it's, you know, it would be great to see a lot of people subscribe to that channel. Um, you know, it's it's not a Christian channel. So again, I mean, my enemies, I'm sure, are going to say, oh, he's spoken against monetization. I've spoken against monetization of a ministry channel. I've never been against somebody monetizing a secular channel. Obviously, if, if I start making wood turnings and I'd open up a store in the area or something or, you know, for my, things that I made out of wood, I'm not going to go in there and just put everything in there and say, by, don by donation or something. No, I'm going to expect money for what I've done. Well, secular work, I expect money, you know, to be reimbursed for that. So, um, please go check out the other channel. We have, as of doing this video here this morning, we, we will have 12 videos on the secular channel and um, some interesting stuff showing some more things around here. A um, couple of videos with Oliver in it, um, which I've listed as they're made for children, and they're not going to. Those videos are not going to be monetized, so FTC is not going to come after me or whatever else. I've studied the rules, the whole COPA ruling thing, and all that. Um, so, 
guess that's about it. Um, thank you to everybody out there that has supported the ministry over the years. Um, please do keep us in your prayers. Um, please pray for the will of God to be clear to me on this matter. I really appreciate that. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching and go check out the other channel.